Hi, welcome to another session of Circuits and Networks. In today's class, under transient analysis, we are going to see the basic derivation involved in order to find out the transient current, especially in series RL circuit. So, how does series RL circuit looks like? It looks like this. You can see an input voltage is connected to R and L and a transient current is supposed to flow when the switch is closed. When the switch is closed, the transient current will flow. And what is the derivation of this transient current is our today's interest. So for that, I am framing the question as find the expression of transient current when a DC input is applied to series RL circuit. So for this, the solution goes like this. So we have the switching condition when it is open and then it is closed. So naturally, when the switch is open, the resistor and inductor, it doesn't receive any energy from the input supply. So naturally, the current value is zero. Especially when you consider the inductor, the current which is flowing through the inductor, it will not change instantaneously. So what we have to remember that the conditions before switching and after switching immediately the current it won't change in inductor and current will flow in the inductor only after the switch is closed and that we have to treat as a switching condition for t greater than zero. So how to obtain this transient current is our basic interest. So when the initially switch is open, no current is flows through resistor and inductor. It implies that the voltage developed in resistor as well as the inductor is zero, treating this as equation one. And when the switch is closed, current starts flowing in the closed circuit. So this is the closed circuit. When the current starts flowing, we have to apply the KVL in order to find out the expression for I of t. So how do we do that? We are going to apply KVL to this closed circuit. So hence, when you are going to apply KVL to this closed circuit, I have the input voltage. So minus V in plus the Ri, the developed voltage in resistor. And the voltage equation for inductor it is L dI by dt is equal to zero. So this is the main equation framed when we are going to apply KVL to this closed circuit. With this, I am reframing the equation. You can see dI by dt, I have taken this L and divided and, and R is getting divided with L times I and V in, I have taken on right side of the equation. So V in also gets divided by L. So this is the equation frame and we are going to treat this equation as equation 2. I hope you understood how we, I have obtained this differential equation with the help of these constants and this equation 2 will give us the general solution for the I of t. So taking this equation as also 3 and resembling it with the mathematics equation which is known as non-homogeneous equation you, when you have di by dt plus pi is equal to q. It's a non-homogeneous equation. Why it is a non-homogeneous equation? Because it is equivalent to Q. Then what would be the homogeneous equation? dI by dt plus pi is equal to zero. This will be the homogeneous equation. So mathematically, uh, homogeneous and non-homogeneous equation are framed like this. So one, need, one particular student should understand how to obtain the solution for homogeneous equation and non-homogeneous equation with a differential approach. So the solution for homogeneous equation will be I of t is equal to k multiplied e to the power of minus pt. This is derived from our basic mathematics. So this is the solution for homogeneous equation where k can be obtained with the help of initial conditions. So it is treated as an arbitrary constant. Similarly, I can also find out the solution for non-homogeneous equation whose equation will be i of t is equal to e to the power of minus pt integration q e to the power of plus pt dt plus k times e to the power of minus pt. So this is the general solution for non-homogeneous equation. So with these two basic mathematics, we are taking all the equations as 3, 4, 5 and 6, 7. 
Now with this mathematics equations, I'm going to apply to equation three and I'm going to obtain the general solution of I of T since we are treating this as non-homogeneous equation. So the equation is framed as I of T is equal to wherever you have P, I have R by L. So e to the power of minus P becomes R by L T integration. Q is V in by L. V is the input voltage. So V in by L is the value of Q where e to the power of R by L which is nothing but P T dt plus k e to the power of minus r by l t. So this equation is the solution for equation 3. So simply we have taken the help of mathematics that is the help of non-homogeneous and homogeneous equation and we frame the equation for transient current and we are treating this as equation 8 which is the general solution of equation 3. I hope you understood this step clearly. Okay, now with this equation, I am going to apply the integration. So, integration of V in by L e to the power of R by L T dt, this particular value will change it to, you see this e to the power of minus R by L T, it is kept as it is. V in by L I have taken outside. So, integration of e to the power of T is nothing but e to the power of T. If at all you have any parameter, if at all you have integration of e to the power of A T, it becomes e to the power of A T by A. So, e to the power of r by l t divided by a, a becomes r by l. I hope you understood this integration. Solution to this integration is this and as it is value k e to the power of minus r by l t. Now, take uh, the terms which are going to get cancelled e to the power of minus r by l t e to the power of positive r by l t these two values get cancelled and r by l and you have v in by l so l l get cancelled so naturally the solution of i of t is obtained as v in by r plus k e to the power of minus r by l t so this i am treating as equation 9 i hope you understood this basic step involved and how we frame i of t it is equal to v in by r plus k e to the power of minus r by l t now what is the unknown parameter the arbitrary constant k is the unknown parameter and I told you from initial conditions we can get the value of k. So from initial conditions at t equal to 0 minus when the switch was open the current in the circuit is 0. So before switching the value of current we are taking as i of 0 minus which is equal to 0 amperes. Similarly at t equal to 0 plus immediately after switching the value of current i of 0 plus is also 0. Is this clear? So please keep this in your mind and treat as equation 10. With the help of this, we are going to apply 10 in equation 9 and we are going to get the value of i of t. How? You see. So, this is the equation at t equal to 0, i of 0 becomes 0 because it is a 0 amperes. So, i of 0 is 0 and in order to obtain the value of k, I am applying wherever I have t, I have applied 0. With this, I am going to get the value of k which is equal to minus v in by r. So, this is obtained with the help of initial conditions. Now, treat this equation as 11 and substitute 11 and equation 10. So, I am going to get i of t it is equal to v in by r minus v in by r which is the value of k multiplied with e to the power of minus pt, p is nothing but r by l. So, this is the equation I am taking v in by r outside so it becomes 1 minus e to the power of minus r by l t now this is the expression for exponential curve so if at all i take a time constant of r by l which is equal to tau so it becomes tau is equal to l by r so i can reframe this equation as v in by r 1 minus e to the power of minus t by tau where tau is equal to L by R, which is known as the time constant for RL circuit applied to supply. Let us read these two equations as equation 12 and 13. Please remember equation 12 and 13. In our future classes, we are going to see the equation 12 and equation 13 in order to solve the transient current conditions for RL circuit. 
So it's an exponential curve. And if at all I want to draw the exponential curve, I have to vary the value of t, small t, I have to vary in terms of tau. So what I'm going to do, I'll take t and I, I will equate, if at all I equate it to tau, if t is equal to tau, then i of t from equation 12 and equation 13 changes to v in by r 1 minus e to the power of minus 1. Why minus 1? t is equivalent to tau, so tau by tau value is 1. So e to the power of minus 1, whose value is 0 0.368. So 1 minus 0 0.368 will give you the value as 0 0.632. This v in by r remains as it is. So when t is equal to tau, i of t is this value. Is this clear? Now just change the value of t to 2 tau. When t is changed to 2 tau, i of t will be equal to v in by r 1 minus e to the power of minus 2. 1 minus e to the power of minus 2 will give you the value as 0 0.865 v in by r. So you can see as the value of tau is changed from tau to 2 tau, the value of transient current is changed to 0 0.632 to 0 0.8. 6.5 V in by R. Now similarly, I am going to take T is equal to 3 tau, where the value of transient current will be equal to 0 0.95 V in by R. Similarly, T is equal to 4 tau will give you the value as 0 0.98 V in by R. And T equal to 5 tau, the transient current will be 0 0.99 V in by R. So what is the conclusion? The conclusion is that as the time is varied from 0 to the time constant, we are going to get the final solution for transient current which is equal to V in by R. So whatever the value of voltage, it is applied to the resistor will give you the total current condition that is the maximum condition for transient current. So if at all I want to plot the transient current for RL circuit with the help of these equations I of t that is the transient current equations which is changed to V in by R 1 minus e to the power of minus t by tau. Just substitute the values of t equal to tau, 2 tau, t3 or tau 4 and phi tau. We will get the value of I of t versus t which is exponentially rising. So this is how the transient current is obtained numerically as well as grammatically, uh, graphically with the help of transient analysis. So I hope you understood the transient behavior of the current for RL circuit. So please share among your friends this particular video as well as subscribe to my channel and please press the bell icon for the future notifications. Thank you.